Okay, so today I'm going to continue our video series in the NFPA 72. Specifically, right now, we're looking at uh, spot type smoke sensing fire detectors. Today, we're going to talk specifically about solid beam and joist construction. Last week, we talked about the device spacing with uh, smooth type ceilings. This week, we're going to talk about device spacing and, and all that with uh, the solid beam and joist construction. So it'll just be different ceiling types. Other than that, it's still the same type of device, the same type of stuff. Before I, I move into it, though, I do want to talk about which version of the NFPA 72 I'm using and why. First thing you got to understand, the NFPA 72, which is the National Fire Alarm and Signaling Code, comes out with a new edition every three years. So right now, Texas has the uh, 2013 set as the minimum standard meaning you cannot go older than the 2013 code year of the NFPA 72. And the different NFPA codes, some of them come out on different years, like the NFPA 70, which is the National Electrical Code. Uh, that one has 2014 and 2017 and 2020. So it's still every three years. It's just different code years than the 72, which is fire alarm. And that one, so we have 13, 16, and 19 has come out. And then next year, 22 there will be a new edition. It hasn't released yet because it doesn't release until next year, but next year there will be a new code re version release. Right now, Texas at a state level has 13 as the minimum, but Texas sets up the way they do that a little different than some other states, being that our local fire marshals and local authorities, they can pick newer editions than what the state says. They just can't go older than what the state fire marshal's office says. And they do that because we have several large cities like Houston, Dallas, San Antonio that have large fire marshal's offices, have all the resources and ability to stay up to date a lot better than some of the, the further out jurisdictions that may not even be able to afford to have their own fire marshal. They might have to partner with surrounding counties so that they all have one fire marshal they share, or even not that, they might have to call it a state level to ask for the state to send fire marshals out when they need them because those counties may be so far and spread out that they actually don't have their own. They don't have the ability or the need to have their own fire marshal most of the time. Very different than the kind of area that we're in. So at a state level, Texas doesn't adopt new codes all the time, but they allow some of the, they allow jurisdictions to do that at their own discretion. So I said 2013 is the, the minimum standard across the state. Here in our area, a lot of the other jurisdictions, about half of the ones we deal with, have started to adopt the 2016 edition. So depending on which county or city you're working in, uh, you might deal with a fire marshal that requires the 2016 instead of the 2013. I don't know of any yet that have adopted the 2019, but you know, that time's coming. And then 2022 will obviously, some people will start adopting that whenever they do. Right now, I'm teaching all of this out of the 2016 edition. So everything I have quoted and copy pasted in here and all that comes from the 2016 edition of the NFPA 72, mainly because that's what NYSET requires. So if you want to study and train for your NYSET tests, uh, NYSET uses the 2016 edition currently. Uh, at some point, I'm sure they'll move up to 2019 and 2022 and so on. But right now, they're out of 16. And also, as time goes on, Texas is going to push at a state level to eventually replace the 2013 code with a newer code. So our training material just has a little bit newer stuff in it. And I do plan on, at some point, doing a comparison between the 2013 and 2016 code to show you what those changes are like. I'll probably do a comparison between 16 and 19, and then, of course, 19 to 22. Most of the time, the changes are very minor. I'll probably do something small and quick, not bore you to tears, but there are seminars out there where they'll spend an entire day going through every single little change, and some of them are not worth mentioning in my opinion. But moving on with today, I'm going to try to move kind of quickly just because there's a lot of information, and I don't want to hold you all here longer than I have to. Before we get started, we need to review a couple key things from last week. One is typical smooth ceiling detector spacing. So we have this either or that we talked about last week which is 15 feet perpendicular from the walls or half of the detector's listed spacing, and then 30 feet between devices, which is the detector's listed spacing. Or if it's an irregular shaped area or for some reason you can't stick with that, the other thing is 21 feet from any point in the area being covered. And then we have our, our diagram. So down here in the bottom right, we talked about corridors, how because they're skinnier, we can get away with a further detector spacing because it stays within that 21 feet of all points in the corridor and so on. So I just wanted to remind you, this is the listed spacing of a detector 
a spot type smoke detector is 30 feet. So half of that spacing is 15 feet. And then it's or 21 feet with to any point in the area. Beam and joist construction. I'm going to talk about what that is and how that's going to affect us before we get into the different types for it. So in the, the picture here on the screen, the one going left to right, this is a beam. And these smaller ones that are going up and down, those are joists. This picture has two different type of joists. It's why I used it because only one type affect how we space detectors, the other type does not. So up here on the top part, you see all of these are solid joists. Down here, you can see there's some other joists that have these angled boards turned sideways. I'm assuming these are two by fours from the picture, but you can see smoke is able to travel through that. So they're not going to impact the way that we do uh, our detector spacing. So in here, I copied the, the code that says solid joists shall be considered equivalent to beams for smoke detector spacing guidelines. And that's just simply because these solid ones will affect the way smoke spreads in a room. These open ones that are not solid joists will not affect the way that the uh, smoke spreads out. Also, this is stick construction. So you see it's wood, lumber. We do a lot of red iron construction as well. So you would have the big red I beams. Those are your beams. And then there's a red iron version that kind of follows the same typical pattern. Those are the joists. And just like how smoke can travel through these so they don't affect us, those red iron joists that smoke can travel through, those won't affect us either. So that's what beam and joist is. I just wanted to make sure we had a clear understanding of that so people aren't under, aren't confused by that as we talk about all these other requirements. So first I'm going to talk about level ceilings. Last week we talked about level and uh, slope ceilings, but everything we talked about was for smooth ceiling spacing. This week we will also talk about level and slope ceilings, but none of them will really be smooth ceilings. They're all going to be beam and joist type construction. So for level ceilings, the following shall apply. For ceilings with beam depths of less than 10% of the ceiling height, which can be found by taking your height, which is H, and multiplying it by 0.1, smooth ceiling spacing shall be permitted. Spot type smoke detector shall be permitted to be located on ceilings or on the bottom of beams. So this is if it's less than 10%. So if you have a ceiling height that is 10 foot, and it has a beam that is less than one foot st sticking down from the ceiling, or 20 foot, and then two foot would be your 10%. And then in that case, it doesn't matter if you put the smoke detector up on the part of the ceiling or at the bottom of the beam is the other part of what it's saying. That's fine because your beams are small enough that it's not going to affect the way the smoke spreads enough. For ceilings with beam depths equal to or greater than 10%. So if we're at that 10 foot ceiling and it is exactly one foot, it falls under the second category because it's equal to or greater. So if it's equal to or greater than 10% of the ceiling height, where beam spacing so now that we have, we know it's either 10% or greater, now we're going to compare it to a 40%. So if it's equal to or greater than 40% of the ceiling height, so for a 10 foot ceiling, now we're talking about a four foot beam. Spot type detectors shall be located on the ceiling in each beam pocket. Um, I have a picture, I'll show you what a beam pocket is on the next slide in case you're not familiar. If it's greater than 40%, every single one of these beam pockets now require a, a smoke detector in them. Moving on to line B here, where beam spacing is less than 40% of the ceiling height, the following shall be permitted for spot detectors. So now we're talking about greater than 10%, but less than 40%. Smooth ceiling spacing in the direction parallel to the beams and one half smooth ceiling spacing in the direction perpendicular to the beam. So if the beams are going forward and backward, as our detectors go forward and backward, we'll be able to maintain that 30 foot spacing. But with those going forward and backward, left and right, we'll only be able to go at 15 foot spacing because that's half the distance. And then line two, location of detectors either on the ceiling or the bottom of the beams. If it's equal to or greater than 10, but less than 40%, they can still be on the ceiling or on the bottom of the beams as they need for their detector spacing. But where it's greater than 40%, those cannot go on the bottom of the beams. They have to go on the ceiling in the smoke pocket. Moving on to the next slide. Do you see the picture here? You've got beams that are going left to right and up and down here and here. These are beam pockets. And so we're about to talk about where beams intersect. That's what these words over here are. But it is possible to only have beams that go left to right the whole way and not have these vertical ones. And in that case, that's where you could have 30 foot going each way, but only 15 foot the other. So I'm going to go on and read about uh, the intersecting beams. For beam pockets formed by intersecting beams, including waffle or pan type ceilings, the following apply. 
For beam depths less than 10% of the ceiling height, spacing shall be in accordance with that long number. They should have just said smooth spacing ceiling because that's what they're referencing. So if it's still the same thing as before, less than 10%, it's still the smooth ceiling spacing. For beam depths greater than or equal to 10% of the ceiling height, spacing shall be in accordance with that other last thing we just read with the uh, the half dist. So because these are these have your beams going both ways, even if you're parallel with these beams, you're going to be perpendicular to these. You're going to have to uh, do that the half spacing. So it's the 15 feet at most, and it's all going to fall into the... Uh, still dealing with that 40% height. That's that's what it's referencing back with that last number. So then when we talk about hallways, for corridors 15 feet in width or less, having ceiling beams or solid joists perpendicular to the corridor length, the following shall apply. So I found a picture that actually took a surprising amount of digging on Google to find a picture that featured what they're describing here. So if you have the length of the corridor running this way, and I have some solid beams going across the corridor here. So this is what it's talking about. Smooth ceiling spacing shall be permitted. Notice it didn't give us a height of the beam like everything else has. So for the hallways, we can keep the smooth ceiling spacing and location of spot type smoke detectors on ceilings, sidewalls, or the bottom of beams or solid joists. So the, the wall spacing we talked about last week doesn't change at all or we can do it on the ceiling or the bottom of the solid joist, however you need for the, uh, what do you call it, for the, for the spacing of the detector. Still talking about level ceilings for areas that are 900 or less square feet. So 900 square feet, I put this stuff on the side. This is the same picture we used last week to talk about the hallway spacing, but I wanted to look at that circle up top. If you look at E, which is 30 foot by 30 foot, that is 900 square foot. You can also do 20 foot by 45 foot. That's still 900 square feet, if my math is correct. And other dimensions as well, but 900 square foot, just to give you an idea of the size room we're talking about. So in those rooms, we will still use smooth ceiling spacing and the location of spot type smoke detectors can be on the ceilings or the bottom of the beams, just like the hallways. So if a room exceeds 900 square feet, which again, you take the length and width, multiply them together. If it's greater than 900, it exceeds it. It no longer follows this. It follows all those other rules. But if it's 900 or smaller, then, then it follows these. So they get a little easier. It's the larger rooms that have all those 10% and 40% rules. Now we're going we're gonna to add slopes into all of this going on with the beam. So for a slope that runs in parallel or upslope, which would be these right here running this way, this is upslope or parallel. So everything on this page is going to apply to that direction. Spot, di spot type detectors shall be located on the ceiling within beam pockets. Again, right here, this is this would be where your beam pocket is. So it has to be located on the ceiling within the beam pocket. The ceiling height shall be taken as the average height over the slope. That's going to be helpful because we get back to our 10% and 40% rules again. So just so you know, to measure it, you have your high side and a low side. And so to find your you just find the average height of the ceiling. I'm not going to get into the math of that. So you're going to find the average height of the ceiling since there is a high side and a low side. And that's what you're going to use for your 10% and 40% calculation. If you need to know how to find the average height of a sloped ceiling, uh, Google will help you the most with that. Uh, smooth ceiling spacing shall be permitted within beam pockets parallel to the beams. So that's saying if you have these beams right here and they run a long distance, but there's no uh, beams going this way. So you have a smoke here and you need another smoke here. Say that's more than 30 feet between them, or that is 30 feet or whatever. You can put it every 30 feet going this direction, but not 30 feet going this way. For beam depths less than or equal to 10% of the ceiling height, spot type detectors shall be located smooth ceiling perpendicular to the beam. Okay, so this this direction is perpendicular to the beam. So if it's less than 10% or equal to 10%, then you can still do the 30 foot spacing. So that kind of makes me go back on what I said a half second ago. 10% or less, you can still do 30 foot this direction. So like this ceiling, for instance, these beams are obviously less than 10% of the height. So we can continue our 30 foot spacing like normal here. For beam depths greater than 10%, we're gonna look at the following two things and we go into the 40%. So if it's also greater than 40, greater than or equal to 40% of the ceiling height, then you have to put a smoke detector in each beam pocket. So let's say these were much larger beams sticking down that were greater than 40% of this height, 
you would need a smoke here and here and here and so on and so forth in every single beam pocket. The direction this way would still be the 30 foot spacing, but this direction, it's every beam pocket. And that's because as they've done uh, studies with computer models, they have found that ceilings that slope this way with the beams running this way, they are very, very efficient at channeling the smoke upward. And it is very seldom that smoke will ever cross from one beam pocket to the other. So every beam pocket would then need a smoke detector in it because if you just put one in, say, every other beam pocket, but smoke is going up the one between those, it won't cross over enough smoke to set the smoke detector off, and so you wouldn't detect the fire. Now, if the beams are less than 40% of the ceiling height, but still greater than 10%, a spot type detector shall not be required every beam pocket, but shall be spaced no greater than 50% of smooth space ceiling. So that would be 15 feet. So if they are greater than 10%, but less than 40%, so anywhere in that range between 10 and 40%, you can go 15 feet this direction, and you'll still have your 30 feet going this way. So that is the, the upslope type beams, and that's how they're spaced. And by the way, we still have the same smooth space for slope ceilings, where you have to have one within three feet of your peak, and then it's every 30 feet down until you get within 15% of your sidewall or 15 feet of your sidewall, not 15%. So that all the slope ceiling spacing that we talked about last week still applies. Now we just have some additional rules. Now for sloping ceilings that have beams running perpendicular across the slope, which you see with this large beam here in the center, and then with these beams on the side, this is what we're talking about now. Spot type detectors shall be located at the bottom of the beams. So they're mounted on the bottom of the beams, not on the ceiling. The ceiling height shall be taken as the average height over slope. So same rule as last one. Spacing shall be measured along horizontal projection of the ceiling, meaning it's measured flat, not at this angle. So when you find your 30 feet, you measure straight sideways 30 feet, not slanted 30 feet. Uh, smooth ceiling spacing shall be permitted within the beam pocket. So now that's this direction, your smooth ceiling spacing is permitted but this one is going to be what changes. For beam depths less than or equal to 10% of the ceiling height, spot detectors shall be located with smooth ceiling spacing. So again, less than or equal to, we're still gonna get to keep our 30 feet. For beam depths greater than 10% of the ceiling height, spot type detectors shall not be required to be located closer than 0.4 times the height and shall not exceed 50% of smooth ceiling spacing. So again, 50% of smooth ceiling spacing is 15 feet. If your beam depths are greater than 10% of your height, no further than 15 feet. Moving on to our last part of it here. So this is, this is it at the end. And then we can take any questions. We can go back and talk about anything that may be confusing because I find it confusing when we get into the beam and joist type stuff just because they're very close but slightly different. So this one is still slope ceilings, but it's with beam pockets formed by intersecting beams. So if you remember the, the ceiling that looked like it was probably a parking garage ceiling that had the cement beams that were going both directions, that's what's going on here with these, all these black bars, those are your beams. And then these gray areas would be your beam pockets. So this is a slope ceiling with, uh, with beam pockets formed by the intersecting beams. Uh, number one, spot type detectors shall be located at the bottom of the beams. So you see that in the picture, these black circles are your spot type detectors and they're located on the beams, not in the beam pockets. If you remember the smooth spacing or the, the level ceiling, not a slope ceiling, they were required to be in the beam pockets, but now they're required to be on the bottom of the beams because of the slope. All right, number two, the ceiling height shall be taken as the average height over slope. So that is the same for all three types of slope ceilings whenever you're dealing with beams or joists. If you're dealing with a smooth ceiling, you don't have to worry about the average height of the ceiling for smoke detectors. But if you're dealing with any kind of beams or solid joists, that's how you're gonna find your ceiling height for the rest of the calculation. It's the average height over the slope. Spacing shall be measured along a horizontal projection of the ceiling. Uh, for beam depths less than or equal to 10% of the ceiling height, spot type detectors shall be spaced with not more than three beams between detectors and shall not exceed smooth ceiling spacing. All right, so the end of that shall not exceed smooth ceiling spacing. Obviously, we never exceed smooth ceiling spacing, as you've probably figured out by this point. So that's the 30 feet. We never exceed the 30 feet, except with the 21-foot the rule. 
not more than three beams between detectors. So that's this left picture over here. So that is where we are less than or equal to 10%, no more than three beams. So you can see detectors, one, two, three beams. And then the second one is for beam depths greater than 10% of the ceiling height. Spot type detectors shall be spaced with not more than two beams between detectors, but shall not be required to be closer than 0.4H, which is the 40%, of the height and shall not exceed 50% of smooth ceiling spacing. Now we're, we're cut into where we can only have up to two beams between them, which you see here. And they can, they're, so you saw these are much more spread out than these because now they can't exceed that 50% or 15 foot spacing. So your, your amount of coverage this way, if your beams get this big, gets cut in half. And also I want to point out, um, you see, you have your beams running here. And even though you're on the bottom of your beams or joists that run this way, you're centered with the vertical ones. That way you're still catching that smoke flow as it comes up the ceiling in between these, because these are still going to channel that smoke. So you don't put it at the intersection. You center it this way between your vertical beams, but you put it on the bottom of your, your horizontal ones. Okay, so that is the end of the uh, solid beam and solid joist smoke detector spacing on ceilings. If, uh, if you have any questions or you're confused or you're like, hold on, stop, let's just go back and completely recover something or how is this different or whatever, uh, open to any of that. Or if you have questions about NFPA 72 and code years, because we talked about that this week as well. Um, if you have any questions about any of it, so it's open floor. And if you don't have any questions, thank you for being here. You are free to go.